Hi friends, how are you doing? I was about to say YouTubers, but there it is. Um, quick update, I want to just show a couple things that I got recently um, and um, make a comment about um, uh, threads. Um, I wanted to just go on record by saying that I didn't answer Nathan Morales' uh, thread uh, because I started to and it was kind of complicated and then I started to watch the answers and when it came to the drug question it was like well there's all the answers and so um, um that one just kind of got past me and then there's a new one by uh, Miracle I, DK I don't say it right but um, I have to admit that sometimes um, I hesitate to answer threads because I literally am at a point where I've forgotten what I have in my collection. I keep needing to look right now to see if I have a Bebop Deluxe and a particular Bowie record because I see them in the stores and I keep wanting to buy them and I keep forgetting to look at home, do I already have it? And so I just wanted to explain that if I don't answer a thread right away or if I don't answer a thread, uh, it's mainly because um, I'm at a point now where it's like, um, what is my favorite psychedelic record? Well, I only kind of know because if I pull records out and start looking, then it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And that's happening a lot, I'm embarrassed to say. So anyway, I wanted to just uh, do a quick update and again, shout out to Nathan Morales. I want to thank him because he offered to help me find the, the uh, International Artist 45s from Record Store Day. I got lucky and um, one of the employees at Homer's where I like to um, shop had a copy of the Rocky Erickson single and um, he went ahead and sold it to me which I really really appreciate I told him you know don't deny yourself but he said no you uh, really want it and chances are I can come across another copy Ho hoping to come across the red Crayola um, and if I don't soon I may be contacting you uh, Nathan <laughs> Something else I picked up, I don't know if this was a Record Store Day release or not, but I didn't notice it until afterwards, and it's this Morrissey single, I'm Throwing My Arms Around Paris. And um, I just love Morrissey, and I love the how he's a provocateur. I, I love how he did this. You know, just, just screwing with people, you know. Just messing with people by what he does, you know. Um, God only knows what kind of person he really is, but he's obviously very intelligent. And he likes to court, I don't know if it's controversy, but it's like he gives you something to think about. You really don't quite know exactly where he's coming from. And um, I want to show this because I just finally got this from the uh, new drummer from for the band Indrima. We have two drummers. And Kevin Donahue just joined the band. He's not in this band. Noah's Ark was a spaceship, but he's in this band, Yuppies. And... I finally got him to give me a copy of this uh, split single that he did with uh, Noah's Ark with the spaceship. These are two really uh, good bands from Omaha. Noah's Ark in particular, I think these guys, um, if they just had a little bit of promotion um, and were heard, um, you guys would be picking up on them. Pretty psychedelic, but also jam rocky, but not too more psychedelic than uh, jam rock. Yuppies are real punk. I mean, this is just straight punk. These guys sound like they maybe learned how to play yesterday. They can play. And that's a compliment when I say it like that. It's just punk as hell. A couple things that um, I bought in recent times but didn't get a chance to show is um, this picture disc by the band Dimu Borgir. Now, I'm not a big, big collector of metal these days, but I do like metal. I like guitars. I like extreme. And so, um, do I like some black metal? Yeah. Some of it's a little much, like Burzum. Some of that is a bit much for me. Um, maybe I haven't heard the right Burzum, but uh, Demo Borgir, I really like these guys. I love the bass player who has the operatic choir type voice, and they'll do those Wagnerian type of uh, arrangements right in the middle of those heavy, super fast songs. I love it. Another record I bought not so long ago used was a really, really, really creamy uh, copy of Buckingham Nix's album. This is, um, in essence, Fleetwood Mac before Fleetwood Mac became the Fleetwood Mac of Buckingham Nix. I was happy to find a gatefold copy. It's in pretty much mint condition. And um, although this is not the sort of record I listen to often, it's such a very good record. 
really good songwriting. Um, got lucky, and I didn't have this Santana album, you know, for the longest. Welcome. And um, I just picked this. Oh my goodness. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to start over again. Um, the record wasn't in the sleeve, okay? But um, I was just listening to this. This is a really neat, neat album. Really neat album. And I agree with what um, Nathan said. It's pretty spiritual, right after Caravan Sarai. Jeff was over not too long ago, and, and we popped on Esper's number two. And I got to get the first album. This is excellent. This is just good all the way through. You know, modern folk. Um, I don't even know if that's the right word. It's kind of minstrelly, you know, kind of a minstrel type of music. It's just excellent. I was listening to that. And then the most recent thing I bought, um, I picked this up today, used um, Lee Perry, produced and directed by The Upsetter. And um, for a long time, I, I could not, I would not listen to reggae uh, for a long time. Just had a real strange attitude, uh, opposition to it. And once I fell for reggae, it's like, man, there's nothing better. You know, uh, reggae music can really, really soothe my soul. I would say that reggae does for me what blues seems to do for a lot of people, that it does not do for me. The blues does not soothe my soul. The blues does not make me feel comfortable. Um, the blues really upsets me. Uh, reggae music does what I think the blues is supposed to do. It calms me, centers me. I feel the earth underneath my feet. It's a people type of music. You know, maybe I ought to do a paper or a treatise on the blues and what my problem is with it. You know, I, it's not so much that I would want to make people stop listening to the blues, but I don't know. I think I got a, I think my perspective about the blues is not real popular, but I think it's valid. I may actually do that sometime. I'm just going to stop right here and keep it real short. Um, Keep those videos coming, folks. I'm really enjoying watching all of your videos. Um, take care. Have a good week.